Hey, I'm Mary Jane. I'm an Italian currently living in New York City, and I've just been to the West Coast for the first time. Here are my first impressions about California. This is something I discovered during one of my live streams walking around San Francisco, actually. Someone in the live chat asked me if I knew that California was bigger than Italy, and I certainly did not. California is 424,000 square kilometers, while Italy only 300,000 kilometers, with populations counting respectively 40 million and 60 million inhabitants, making Italy twice as dense as California. And since we are giving numbers here, I'll also report from Wikipedia that California's GDP per capita is almost 80,000 US dollars compared to almost 35,000 US dollars in my home country. I knew California was a long state in the US, but I did not re realize Italy was only 75% of California. When I think about the 20 regions of Italy, each one completely different from each other, all the subregions, the linguistic islands, the geographical islands, the different cultures and traditions, then I think that that's only three quarters the land of California state. That's so much land. <laughs> This is also why it's essential that I specify that I've only been to the counties of Sonoma, Marin, Napa, and to the cities of San Francisco and Oakland. I'm well aware that there are probably many, many differences between this area and the central or southern part of California. Nonetheless, from now on, when I say California, this is the area I'm referring to. I knew San Francisco is famous for having a peculiar microclimate. I knew it's not LA. I knew the weather is pretty consistent throughout the seasons. What I did not expect was finding colder temperatures than New York City in the spring. In mid-May, the temperatures I found were about 14 to 20 degrees Celsius or 57 to 68 Fahrenheit with plenty of wind. Not all that pleasant, I have to say. <laughs> After all, the famous quote falsely attributed to Mark Twain says, the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. Look, I come from the north of Italy, I've lived in Germany, traveled to central northern Europe, Scandinavia, which are not parts of Europe famous for their friendliness, for sure. <laughs> but I've also lived in Rome, traveled quite a lot of in southern Italy, hung out in the Balkans, been several times in Spain, Greece and Turkey. Still, by far, the friendliest people I've met are the Americans. Americans are the queens and kings of small talk of asking how you're doing when they greet you, of coming up to you if you look lost, of smiling and chatting to strangers. These are all things that I've learned by living in New York City, by the way, which is considered by Americans one of the least friendly parts of the whole country, if not the unfriendliest one. I've been to also many states in the northeast of the US, but never found a significant difference in attitude as I've seen in California. Here people smile at you so often, and I'm not referring to interested smiles, by the way. When I was hiking, everyone would immediately say a big hi with a smile when we crossed paths and had no problem stopping to exchange a chat for a couple of minutes. In line at the bakery, it's so easy to start a conversation, ask questions, and then other men and women hold the door for you. The cashiers at the local grocery shop started a small conversation with each one of the customers they were serving, at least the shop I used to go to. And I'm not talking about, about the usual monotone, hey, how are you, typical in any shop in New York City. The tone of many Californians was so bright, enthusiastic, almost comforting, I would say. I mean, within a minute and a half, you can only have a conversation about the weather or the quality of the veggies on sale, but it was the attitude that was different. Friendlier, I would say. 
I loved it! I left the biggest surprise I've had for last because I'm going to go a bit more in depth with this one. So I hope you don't get bored. <laughs> Just know that the rest of this video is about this one specifically. One thing I knew for sure about California is that it's a very drought prone territory, that it's on a drought now, right now, and that it's been for most of the past 10, 15 years in a drought. I didn't know the specific data, but when I thought about living in California, I thought about having to face this drought problem in your daily life. I was ready to change my water consumption habits and respectfully adapt to the wants of the local population during my trip. With much surprise, I didn't need to change anything at all, and I still have been a very respectful guest in these regards. In fact, I felt just like everywhere else in the United States, very frugal and sober in my usual water consumption. As I was traveling for the first time to California, I was expecting houses and buildings to be built with water recycling systems, low flow taps or aerator attachments for the faucets, special shower heads and composting toilets as well. I was expecting people having very different habits regarding water, being very, how can I say, but very agile in turning the tap on and off many times during the use, in regulating the faucet's level to the specific need. Well, you already know where I'm going with this, right? I did not find any of this. I definitely was not expecting to see sprinklers in outdoor spaces, but only drip irrigation systems. I feel like I need to give a little bit of context to my perspective regarding the topic at this point, because I come from one of the most rainy regions of Italy, if not the rainiest. We indeed have the rainiest town of Italy, Musi, with an average of 3.3 meters or 130 inches of rain per year. Yet it's not uncommon to see drip irrigation in private gardens or public outdoor spaces. In California, I was expecting to find water collection system, which I didn't see, but in all honesty, I also didn't look for them actively. So in, in Italy, many houses with a garden, for example, collect rainwater from the roof and store it in a big plastic tank like this one or upcycled oil metal tanks. So you can actually see them on the side of the house just by walking by. Sometimes they do have underground tank though. This one you cannot really see. So maybe that's the one they used in the area of California I visited where it rains quite a bit, honestly. I was also eager to see if they had come up with an efficient system to collect water from dew and fog, which, again, they had a lot of both dew and fog while I was there. No need to say that I got quite disappointed with that also. This is definitely what surprised me the most about California. Their wasteful water consumption habits, even if they are in a drought. I wasn't expecting a Middle Eastern type of behavior, you know, populations who have been dealing with lack of water for hundreds of years. I know California is still America, but I thought I would find a very different situation than New York, for example, where people don't even pay their water bill when they rent an apartment, so they use it as if it was limitless and free. As I said, where I come from, we definitely don't need to save our water all that much, we have plenty of it. Nonetheless, we are taught since we're kids that the water is precious and something that is not to be wasted. We are taught to never open the tap all the way unless it's necessary, to close it when we are not using it, to not flush the toilet if we only threw some paper, for example. We wash our salad in a bowl, not in running water, so that we can then give the dirty water to the plants. Our bathtubs are used sparingly and they're moderate in size and many of us only shower every few days or once per week because we use bidet and sink for our daily hygiene. From this very small trip, I got the idea that Californians are facing a huge life-threatening problem without really knowing where to start to solve it. I'm afraid they will soon start transporting water on wheels from other regions rather than educating the population to change their 
daily behaviors and lowering the overall water consumption, for example. Of course, I've only been in California for two weeks, seen a limited extension of territory, interacting with a limited amount of people, so this might be a very partial impression, simply, that does not reflect the majority of the state. So take it with a pinch of salt. If you're interested in reflecting about the big problems our society is going through, you should subscribe to my monthly newsletter because a new one will be sent tomorrow. I'm a philosophy major and in this newsletter series I'm currently discussing about how the internet communication is affecting many aspects of our society. Subscribe on whatashamemaryjane.com it's free. I look forward to all Californians to tell me in the comments which one of my impressions will stick in my future trips to California and which ones are simply going to disappear. See you in my next video.